All right, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again, and welcome back. Now, I've just gotten back from that last plane air trip I was on. If you haven't seen it, I'll leave a link in the description below, but I've gotten back from this beautiful trip on the river. Really enjoyed myself, got plenty of work done, got plenty of smaller plane air works done, as well as one of the large major ones. Anyway, gotten back and I'm really excited because some of those little ones, I think I can use them and do something with them and bring them out further on a bigger picture try and bring out something more that I was trying to achieve on the day, but just bring it right out. All right, so from those small studies, here we go. Now, what I'm gonna do is just quickly block in with a bit of our ultramarine blue. Before I go any further, today I'm using ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, alizarin crimson, yellow ochre, titanium white, got a bit of cad yellow deep there. And then over here, I've got a cobalt blue, magenta, viridian green. Okay, now that's the palette I normally use for whatever I'm painting, and I find I can mix pretty much any color with that. Okay. All right, so now establishing just the major, the major things. All right, let's have a look. All right, now just get a bit of a, I've just, just for this blocking with the brush, it's just a bit of a linear thing. I've got a bit of a pure gum turpentine and some of the ultramarine blue. All right. Now, I want to establish a major player here, I reckon, so that'll come up just a few more way up. Something like so. Now, I've got to try and stay out of the way of the camera. I've got the camera on the other side today, mixing it up a bit, bit of variety here and there. Never went, never did anyone any harm. All right, so we go like so. Just feel, we don't have to do anything exact at the moment, we're just trying to feel a bit of a, a bit of a nice shape. All right, now, where do I want this next tree? I want that one yeah, positioned here, I reckon. Okay. Right, so just put that there, stick that there, up along those lines. We've got one more major tree here. We'll just put a major trunk here. Just working out what I want to do. I reckon I might go this way today, like that. Build one of those trunks, the ones that sort of swirls off like so. They're always a good one. And, uh, shoot that way. Just putting these trees where I want them rather than exactly where they were on the day. Now what I might do is change, let me just think about this one. This one will just come out. Roll off a bit like so. You're just trying to feel a good composition so So you don't put them exactly where they were on the day, you just build in a beautiful blend of shapes so that they feel good on a flat two-dimensional surface and they're easily red. All right, something along those lines. Right there, over here. It's all good fun. Really takes me back to the particular day I was there, which was not long ago. Right. Now, major shapes up here. I might go with the major one there. Just feeling it may look like I don't, I don't know what I'm doing here, but to me, they're just a couple of marks. Just give me the idea of what I want. That's pretty much about it. Pretty much got the right shapes there. All right. Okay. Right, now with fun and games with all that stuff, I'll just move this turb so that'll be it for the thinning of the paint. There'll be no more thinning of the paint. It's just gonna be straight paint, straight out of the tub, out of the, 
out of the tin. All right, so now I'm going to establish the darkest dark first. So I might go alizarin crimson, maybe a bit of viridian green with that. Alizarin crimson that produces a very strong dark. Just want the darkest darks. Let's have a look. Stick some real dark darks in to set ourselves up for a good tonal range. Now I might mix a bit of burnt sand with that, ultramarine blue, they're a very dark combo also. Now this is the underpainting. As you know, I like to work with the darks first and then I can lighten up after that, but it's good to put the darks on if you're painting in oil. It's good to get those darks on first. You can do it the other way around, but it's, uh, it's good to do the darks and then gradually work your way to light. Alright, now, let's do this. I'm going to work... The thing about that's different about when you're working on site, that's burnt sienna, ultramarine blue to get a dark, fairly dark colour. When you're working on site, you're working with objective, the exact colours that are there, and and you're working with that, and you may be altering them slightly, but you, you've got everything in front of you. When you're working at home, it's not all in front of you, except for a couple of little uh, references. So that, in some ways, makes it a different form of painting. It's not 100% observational anymore. There's a little bit of a interpretation going on as well. So now I've got burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, a bit of white to lighten the tone. Let's just get some of that in. Just going to go a bit of burnt sienna, burnt sienna yellow ochre. Just there, alright. Burnt sienna ultramarine blue again. Get this all blocked in nicely. Alright, now what time am I going to use there? Okay. There will also be a few Viridian Greens thrown into the works, a bit of yellow ochre. You're going to get the colour of the water now. There's a reflective water down here, so we'll go yellow ochre and burnt sienna. A bit of Viridian Green. Put plenty of that in. Beautiful colour. Yep. Okay. Alright, that goes there, that goes there. That'll go there. Now, just, just need to be careful here. I've got, I'm running out of board here. Hang on. I just don't want to, I should have stuck something down there. I don't want to get paint on that lovely surface there, the bench top, but at the same time, I want to get that blocked in there. So I'll just take my time a little bit to get that right. I'm being along those lines, there you go. Yellow ochre, Viridian green, burnt sienna. Now I might go a little bit of blues with magenta here. I'm just going to mix it up a little bit different now. So I've got magenta, ultramarine blue and white. Just going back a little bit. I'm going to throw a little bit of those greens in. It's going to be the foliage, but it's a little bit more in the mist. So there's a bit of those other colours and tones mixed with it. Ultramarine blue. Magenta, lighten the tone a little bit, a bit more blue, just feeling as I go, so it's a little bit more white, a little bit more blue. Tell you what, it's a windy day outside today, very windy day indeed. Right, let's just keep going with that. Theory, magenta, ultramarine blue, a 
may go a bit more pure magenta hang on we'll just go a bit of pure magenta and white lighten the tone and make it more of that magenta color a beautiful color bit more white bit better mix These things blocked in. Right. Change it up a bit more, a bit more yellow ochre and burnt sienna and white. Burnt sienna. Tiny bit of the viridian green. I'm just going to get a foliage colour now for up higher. Yellow ochre, viridian green. Right, what do we got here? Yeah, just got to lighten it a little bit. Bit of yellow ochre and a bit of white. Alrighty then. Alrighty. Yes, yes. Let's stand back and have a look, eh? It's all working out now. Just go a bit more white, magenta and blue. Let's mix up a little bit of a lighter tone here. Just going to play some of this in. Just lightening that tone to create a bit of, a bit of mystery and mist. Frosty morning mist. Right. Back into it again. Back into it. Ultramarine blue. Magenta, ultramarine blue, and I'm mixing a bit of viridian greens and other things, so I'm getting quite a neutral shadow, neutral tone for the, uh, the trunk here. Right. Lighten that tone again. Takes me back to being out there. Absolutely lovely stuff. Absolutely. A bit more viridian. I just want a bit of a mixture between the purples and the blues and the green variances in these shadows. So they they got all the variety. one I'm just going to lighten the tone I want this one to drop back a bit more in the mist be mysterious and more distant just go a little bit lighter a little bit lighter in tone so I've got a bit more white it's such a misty day we want some of them to be closer and stronger and some of them to be more mysterious and light as they're drifting off into the distance let's go a bit of yellow ochre and burnt sienna yellow ochre burnt sienna and white mixing those warm and cool colors into those trunks Lines getting there, getting there. All right, what are we up to? Okay, 
Okay, yellow ochre again. It's going to mix a little bit of that watercolour. Burnt sienna, yellow ochre, viridian green. Let's see what we get. That's a lot of burnt sienna, so we'll go a bit more yellow ochre and viridian green to get that beautiful watercolour look. Yep, just a bit more green. A bit more yellow ochre, so there's a little bit less burnt sienna. Ultramarine blue, white, magenta, ultramarine blue, getting there, getting there. Yeah. A bit more of that same thing with the magentas and the ultramarine blues. A bit of mixing here and there. Right, let's just stand back and have a look at that, eh? Alright, now, just, just going to get a little bit of magenta. I've got it in these uh, cartridges, in this one, rather than a tin. Magenta there, I've gone through a lot of magenta, so I need a bit more. These are pretty good, these things too. It's still art spectrum paint, the same stuff as I normally use, but uh, it's in a cartridge instead. Alright, so I'll mix up a very light tone. So I'll use a lot of white, so we've got ultramarine blue and magenta with a lot of white because we're getting stuck into the misty sky colours down low now. It's got plenty of magenta so I'll just put a little bit more ultramarine blue so it's slightly closer to the blues. Let's just have a look what we've got. It's got to be a light tone so it's got to be plenty of white in that mix. Just spin her up like that. Look at that. Beautiful. in the mix for now. Just putting bits here and there down low. This lighter colour. Right now I've done that. It's a bit of paper towel. Now I've done that, I'll clean the knife off completely, and then I'm going to go for burnt sienna, white, tons of that beautiful white. Look at that beautiful stuff. With that burnt sienna, get a lovely light tone again. Plenty of white in the mix. Yep, plenty of white. Light misty tone, mix it up beautifully. Let's have a look. See a bit of front, bit of a front coming in outside, completely the opposite to this this way that I'm painting here. Get that burnt sienna in. It was such a lovely misty morning on this day. Beautiful frosty cold. Absolutely frosty, cold, crisp morning. One of those beautiful, still mornings. Okay, we'll just get some boots in here. Yeah. It's getting similar down below here as what's up above there. Okay, now that I've got that, I'm going to go up to another layer. So, Clean some of that out of the way. All right, let's go for yellow ochre. Clean a bit of yellow ochre. Plenty of that titanium white again. Yellow ochre. Get that mixed up into a nice brew. 
clean that off all there. All right, a bit more yellow ochre. Let's just see what we've got here. Pretty good. Just put that in. Stick it in areas where you think it needs to go. Try not to touch the darks too much for now. We're just trying to work around those darks for now. We'll blend a few of them together later on, but for now, it's all about just placing them without making too much of a muddy mess. And those dark tones, if they mix too much together, will give us a bit of mud. We don't want that, All right? More of that yellow oak and white. So that was good stuff. Beautiful colour. Beautiful sky type of colour. So we just keep putting that in. here and there. All right, now I'm going to go up a layer, so I'll go to the cobalt blue, mix a bit of that with those whites and yellow ochres. This makes it a type of a green blue, which you get at that morning sort of light. It's a blue, but it's kind of got an ochery, ochery green feel about it too. It's a lovely colour. All right, now let's have a look. Yeah, just that sort of slight green feel. Stick a bit of that in everywhere. Come down here. All right, now go for more of a more of the clean blue and the white. Actually, else what do we got here? A bit of the cobalt blue. I've got a tube here for this one actually run out a bit of blue, so I'm just going to go a little bit more. So it's more of that cobalt blue and white and less of the ochres in it. Yeah, a little bit lighter in tone, a bit more white. Flat that on in places. Now we've done that, just going to change tax and go to a warmer blue red. So, sorry, a blue, a blue sky up higher that's got more red rather than the ochres in it. So I'm using a bit of that magenta mix from over here, pulling it into the ultramarine blue instead of the, the ultramarine blue is a red blue. And the cobalt blue is more of a neutral blue. So the cobalt blue I was using in these ochre colours, but now I'm going to the top. I'm going for the red blue, which is ultramarine blue. And I'm also throwing a little bit more magenta in to make it a little bit more red. Right, let's see if I can get this on here. It's close on what I was after. Close on it, yeah. I was a bit stingy on that brew, so I'm going to have to mix up a bit more. Ultramarine blue and magenta. Ultramarine blue, a little bit more white to lighten it. A bit more white again. There we go, what have we got? Nice and dark up there. Nice dark tone. Okay, so that's all, all getting there. Bit of a patchwork there. I, like I said, I'll pull them all together later on. Just getting a general coverage for now.
All right, so let's just start blending some of those tones in together so that they're not staring at each other in the face. Pull some of those beautiful blues into those ochres. Let's get everything blended nicely. Lovely stuff, lovely stuff. Blend some of those darker blues down a bit and take some of those ochres up a bit so that they don't stare at each other too much. Just gotta make sure I don't wear paint on my pants. Blend that, blend that. Lovely stuff, look at that. Right, so they're starting to come together a little. Starting to see something there. That's it, yep. Alright. All right, now I might just clean a bit of a spot here, move some of these beautiful colours that I was mixing, stick them here out of the way. Give me a spot to mix up a bit more colour All right now. I've got a lot of the lower key colours in, now I'm going to go for some beautiful powerful colours. So what I might get is some Cad Yellow Deep, mix it with a bit of Cad Red and a little bit of pure white. So I get myself a really light tone. Let's have a look at that. So that's a mix of the CAD colours with a bit of white, CAD yellow, CAD red to make. It's kind of like an orange now, I guess you could say, with a bit of white thrown in to lighten the tone. Let's just have a look. I'll just go a little bit more yellow than that. Right. Just got to feel it as I go. So I'm just adding a bit more yellow and a bit more white after putting it on. It's just giving me an idea of what I want. So I'm just going to put that in there for now. Now I'm just going to go for some pure cad red, really stinging up. Let's have a look here, just on the edge here, I might just put some really clean red. With a knife on edge. Just have a look at that. Alright, let's go a bit more of that cad red and yellow, mix up a bit more of a brew here. White, yellow, red. It's just a little bit more red dominant, a little bit more pink dominant or something along those lines, I guess you could say. All right. Yep. Now I'm very lightly placing this here because the, the colours from underneath, which are all the, well, let's just get that in. The colours underneath are wet and they're the cold colours. So these warm colours will quickly if, will mix together very easily. That's why they just got to be laid on with the palette knife to prevent that mixing because if they mix they will instantly turn to mud so because it's a warm tone 
say a red on the top of a blue, mix them together it'll go grey, but if you sit them on top of each other it'll really pop. So the idea here is to get it to pop. Feel those little babies in here and there. All right, now we're starting to get some dramatic effect. All right, that's coming together. We're starting to get a few of the colors and tones all in there now. So, what I'll do is I'll bring a few of these shadowy tones, just lightly blend them with a clean knife and let's just pull that, let's just mix that sky blue there and pull it half over the top so we're blending the shadow tone ever so slightly with the sky tone, it just helps bring them together a bit. Just pull them together. Fairly clean knife for that job. Pulling those colours and tones together, so leave them a bit out of focus for mystery, and we'll just get rid of some of these extreme whites up here. Blend that blue nicely. Pull those colours and tones together, like so. It's starting to happen. All right, let me just have a look at that. All right, well, that's all coming together nicely. Let's just get some straight cad red scarlet. Beautiful colour. Just going to pop in. This big blob of it there. A hint of it there. Alright, so that's working now. I might get a few of the foliage colours, lighten them up a bit with a, a lighter foliage tone. So let's have a look what we got. Yellow ochres, a little bit of it in green, but I'm trying to keep it a high key of colour, a lighter tone. Let's have a look what we got. Dark, so I'll get a bit of those cad colours, throw it in. I want a very high key colour here, so it's like the light shining on the foliage. A little bit of white in that mix to lighten it. It. Just want to feel like the sun sort of spearing, spearing out from here and just lighting up a little bit of the undersides of the, the trees, etc. A little bit here and there. Alright, getting there now. I've got a lot of blocked in, but I feel like I've got to clean up a few of those colours in the sky. Got a tiny bit muddy with the uh, mixture of the foliage and then the sky behind it. Because the foliage is a dark tone and the sky is a light tone, it just got a little bit muddy, so in some areas I feel like I want to just clean that up a little with some pure clean paint.
Big sigh. Just move that across a little bit. It's a real blend of, uh, it's a real play of subtle colours and all of a sudden the grand bang right now. Bit of paper towel. All right, get some of those beautiful, beautiful reds, yellows, just Keep on just building a bit of a bit of an accent. All right. Bit of light here and there playing around. Just go by feel. What have we got on the original plain air study? All right, let's just get a bit of that red. What are we? All right, let's get a bit of that red. It's all about feel now. Just getting the right blend of marks. Not too many. Not too little. Just perfect. Not asking too much, is it? All right, well, it's really starting to come together now, I reckon. Uh, I'm really enjoying that subtle play. More and more as the painting's gone on, I've gone for that. I've really decided to bring out, like I was saying, I did the small one on location and I got a bit of colour, but I felt like I could really work with that colour if I brought it back in the studio and did a bigger version. And so that's what I've done. I've really played up on all the subtle colours that I saw on the day there, and that's the benefit of plein air painting. You get to see all these subtleties that you don't seem to see if you're looking at a photographic reference of it. It's also just being in nature, the excitement of nature, and it's all around you, you can kind of feel it. And so by painting the smaller study, I feel like I got a start of that energy I wanted. And then uh, bringing it home, I've enhanced that original impression that I was thinking on the day. Okay, pretty happy. Now, this style of painting is interesting because I could definitely go a lot further with finish. I could put a lot more marks and lines and really refine it, but in some ways something will be lost when I do that. 
at the moment it's quite spontaneous still and fresh more like when you paint it on location getting something done in a certain amount of time it's got that fresh spontaneity that rugged accuracy anymore and I feel like I've lost that moment in time because it was just a moment in time at what and I feel like if you capture it in that way think of it as a moment in time capture it just as an essence just that quick impression it actually gives you the feeling more like you're there at that time in that fleeting moment.